Turn your phones off, please. It's a, it's a big interference when you're in the spirit. But anyway, I listened carefully to him. Then I recorded it, all of it. And uh, a lot of the things that Donald Trump, there's a lot that he knows. He's not sharing it all. But there is a, a Hispanic pastor that has his ear. He has quite a few audiences with him. And one of the, so Jim Baker asked him, he said, well, can you just tell us some things you'd advise the, the president on? He said, yes. We told him when all these children were coming in with these parents, to check their DNA with every person they come with. And thousands of children were with the wrong one parents. Third, oh, one third were not. One third not. They, yeah. It's called sex trafficking. Okay? And we need to, to just read the word and check ourselves, like we're checking our report card, to see if we're in the word or not. See if we're pleasing the Lord. You know, it, it's a good, th good thermometer, you know that? <laughs> we can see whether we're hot or cold. Amen? Yes. He doesn't want us lukewarm. Praise the Lord. And I've lived in Russia and I've lived out here in the desert. And I don't know which I like better, hot or cold. <laughs> because if you're extremely cold, it's cold. Yeah. Yeah. We stayed in a, a, a carriage house in Estonia, and it had seven big furnaces in it. And we had to bank at least four of them to keep it warm. But it would keep the house warm for three days. Yes. So how many want to be hot for at least three days? <laughs> at least. Three, 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 three. Yes. You can always fan yourself, fan the fires a little more. But we want to be a people that hear. And right now, he's going to be on again today, and I wish I'd have caught him this morning because for some reason he's taken off of dish at night. He used to be on a lot at night. But he's going to have him on for a couple more days, and they've written a book. Listen, folks, this country is in worse condition than what we realize. He shared things like the CIA, the second religion in this country. You know what it is? It's Islamic. It's not the Baptist, not the Methodist, not the Catholic. It's the Christian, then the Islamic. And they actually have a number of cities in this nation where they... The CIA are training young Muslim people right. 14 to kill. Camps. 14, Four, 14 camps. camps in America. I mean, you know, is anybody running this nation? Has anybody got anything to say? Is anybody upset? You need to gather about a million people and just march day and night. If I perish, I perish, Esther said. We're going to see the king. We're going to go see the real authorities. Come on. The real authority who can do something it needs to be done. So we need to be praying. And the word of the Lord from Jonathan Kahn was, in his Sapphire book, was he said, July is the month to pray like we've never prayed. And if we're not careful, we can be so easily persuaded. I'm not painting a bad picture here. Pastor Maiden preached on the hiding place of God Wednesday night. And with his lips, it was like he painted a portrait of being in the presence of God. It was so wonderful that people just lingered for a long time after he left. The residue was like, like a waterfall <coughs> came into the sanctuary. When he began to describe <coughs> the presence of the Lord and what it really means. Hide ourselves in the Lord. People that are hidden, they're gonna be hidden in the glory these days. When you're in the glory, you don't, you're not bothered by a lot of things, but you know what bothers God. And we want to be people praying for what bothers God. And talk to him, spend some time talking to him. And wait to see what he has to say. This is what Habakkuk said. When you want to call him Habakkuk, it's spelled the same way. He, he said, I'm going to get myself in this high place, and I'm going to see what he has to say. See what he has to say. You got me? See what he has to say. And if we're seeing, he's usually 
will tell you what you've had an unction of or he's been talking about. You've been in that atmosphere, in those surroundings of who God is, what he wants, what he's saying unto us. <coughs> Hallelujah. And I love it when he responds. I love it when you've had some thoughts and all of a sudden he says something to you. And you thought, where did that come from? Oh, I asked him that question two days ago. He doesn't always answer right away. Once in a while, he does if it's fatal to you at that time. I, I was reading in the book of Daniel last night about the book, chapter 7, where he saw those beasts. And he was talking about the bear and the lion, and he was actually talking about England, America, Russia, France, Germany. But he said the bear had three ribs in its mouth. I haven't heard anybody explain that anywhere what those three ribs were. Anybody have any idea what they are? He said the bear had three ribs. He said the leopard had a rooster on its back, a fowl it calls it, and then of course there was the eagle on the back of the lion, which represents America, okay. and the fowl represents France. Yep, exactly. part of Germany. These countries are going to form a coalition against Israel. Not England. She's had her chance. But he's talking about, uh, it talks about Russia being a bear and had three ribs in its mouth. So I asked the Lord. I've been, I'm waiting. Lord, I went to bed. Long time read. Lord, what are those three ribs? It's significant of a key that will unlock more of the mystery. But keep your eyes upon the Lord. Keep your eyes upon the prize. Keep your eyes upon what is truth. And walk in all. Don't compromise what you believe in. Are you listening to me? Very important not to compromise. I never liked anything fake. Somebody tells you on the jewelry shopping centers, they said, well, you get something for half the price. And it's about half as good, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gold over silver. Well, it washes off after a couple of years. And you've spent maybe $150 or $60. Go ahead and spend the whole four hundred to get something that'll last forever. Pay the price. He said, I have shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Those three things. And I had someone to tell me, a very spiritual person, most of you know the person if I call their name, I ran into him, it was a great miracle. And they have tasted the glory, and they sent this to me. They said, I realize there's another dimension. And they said, everything else I thought I loved is not even in the picture anymore. And we're talking about religious things and not spiritual things in the church. It's another world they've been to Israel. That's when it really opens up to you. The meaning of glory. It's not all oh, the glory was there. It's not, listen, if there's no miracles there, the glory's not there. Yeah. And I don't mean one or two. I mean many miracles when the glory is there. Many miracles. Many mysteries, many great words are being spoken into the heart. Much understanding is coming alive. And it makes you a different person, and you, we're just not in and out. We're happy one moment and sad the next. No, it changes our hearts. And if God is trying to change us, don't struggle against it or you'll miss portions. Portions of it. And God will not always strive with someone when he's trying to tell them something. If they, if you don't receive after three or four knocks on your door, he'll just go on by. Oh, he'll still bless you. He'll still take care of you. But the riches of his glory won't be revealed the way he wants to reveal it. He won't be your satisfying portion. The luster of who he is won't be as bright. Let me tell you something. The finest dress a woman could want will lose all of its beauty when you've looked into the face of Jesus. Look into his face, and all of a sudden, there's a quick change. 
and it shows upon the countenance. Right now, Brown's got that look on his face, and a lot of people don't realize it. He's looked, because he's looked into the face of Jesus, and he tells it the way it is. And uh, I just, I'm telling you that a lot of people that I thought should have been in that meeting were not there. I kept looking. He rented our church. So I went. And I cheered him on. He stopped right in the middle of what he was saying. He came over and prophesied over me. I was the only person who prophesied over You got to press for the mark. Now, I didn't need a prophecy, but evidently God thought I needed a word. It was a good word about what God was going to do. I wish I'd have written it down. But it's somewhere back in there hidden, and it'll come out when I need it. Amen? Amen. Don't you know, he said, don't think about what you're going to say, but the words will be in your mouth when you're up against governments and evil people. <laughs> I remember that Ethiopia was under Russia, and I thought I was sneaking in. And I remember finally, I didn't know where we were. We were right under the nose of the authority. And I was asking for help, and there was a big picture of Lenin as big as that slot right there in the wall. He said, oh, we've been monitoring you ever since you got here. This is what he said to me. He said, and you ladies are in trouble. It was two of us. And this was his next word. But never mind, we're going to help you. <laughs> Can you imagine? Never mind. God turned his words in his mouth. Yes. You got to pluck up some things before some things can be rooted. Yes, some things need to be removed for God to plant. How many want Him to plant? Yes. Well, He's got a big plow, Amen. and He's turning things over, <coughs> turning it over, and be happy about it. You want to be happy, happy. And then if somebody asks you, "Why are you happy?" Tell your best friend is called Happier. His name is Jesus. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm not always like this. I can be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm getting better at being terrible. <laughs> Hallelujah. That didn't sound right. I'm getting better at being, yes, terrible in the way of the spirit of being fierce. Okay. The scripture yeah. talks about these people with a fierce countenance. Yeah. Fierce. They've been looking into the face of the sun. Thank you, Jesus. And we want to have an encounter with him. I wrote a few things down, but I just want to tell you this. When I went to church Wednesday night, what I'm saying to you is try to get closer to God. Meditate on him more. Think about him more. And, and just ask him questions, Lord. And I mean sensible questions. Don't ask him why the weeds are growing in the yard. <laughs> but when I went to church Wednesday night, pastor said he had a series on in, dwelling in the secret place. So he said, let's everybody open your Bible to the 32nd chapter of Psalms. My marker was already there. I, I didn't know I was turning to the 32nd chapter, but that's where the ribbon was, so I just opened the Bible. There it was. And I find that every time at random, if I just open my Bible, doesn't matter where it is, front and back, I just open, start reading. That's where the table is set. If we come to a banqueting table, it has everything, no matter where you sit, it has everything at the table. And so the Lord gave me the fifth chapter of Nehemiah. It's all about building the wall. <laughs> you know the wall we're trying to build up? <laughs> they had a mind, the Bible says they had a mind to work. When you have all the armies of heaven helping you, honey, God help the people. Are you listening to me? I awakened one day and I heard the Lord say to me, I'm going to visit these people at this address. But he didn't give me the street, he just gave me the numbers. And I thought, I know that address. And I, but he wouldn't tell me, he wouldn't let the street fall into my mind. I thought, 
And I thought, I know those numbers. Mm -hmm. Well, it was the numbers of my own family. It was my sister's children. She died and her children got her house. And there was all kinds of recklessness going on in that house. Bad things. What kind of bad things? Well, they had a big TV stream with all the HDs and UDs and whatever the Ds were, they were there. Uh -huh. I mean, they were living a pers per promiscuous life. And at one time, the people were saved. Some of the people were spirit-filled and going to church. The Lord said, I'm going to visit this house. Praise God. I don't want to tell you what happened because it scares me when I think about it. All of them ended up in the hospital. One had cancer. One got into a terrible accident. They were rushing to the hospital to see somebody else had gotten an accident. And they saw the ambulance going to the hospital, didn't know it, and then they ended up in an accident trying to get to the hospital to see them. Wow. It was just, it was like a domino effect. Okay. A domino effect. So, so God wants us to let the bells go off, honey. I'm talking about the bells of the priesthood. You've been in the temple. Come on. You've been in the secret place. You've been behind the curtain. Those curtains weighed 150 pounds, and they talked about 75. It took 70, or more than that. It took 75 priests to pull the curtains back to get into the Holy of Holies. 75. They were so heavy. How many want that heavy weight of glory on you? Amen. We don't have to be a genius or the best musician or singer in the world because it's just a noise, but you want to hear a sound, a sound that God has kissed the voice of that person. They've been close to the Lord. But it says in Nehemiah, they had a mind to work. And twice in two or three chapters, I remember I told you, what's the number of testing? Ten. Ten. Oh, somebody got it. Twice it speaks about ten in those chapters. Just get your concordance out and find how many times ten is written in the Bible, and you'll find it's where people were being tested. My, we ten days, ten days. What do we got to wait here? Ten days. We think ten minutes is too long. Ten days. So I sit down and figured, and I'm throwing this in for good measure. I sat down last night and I figured how many days. I come from a ministry, we were trained in a missionary training race. Now listen, we find it hard to get to church on Sunday morning. And most churches don't even have services on Wednesday night. What a shame. What are they going to say to God one day? In our ministry for 20 years, because that's how long I lived on that base. We did 569 services a year. A year. Plus travel to the nations. Plus we did other revivals in the United States. Just in our, in our camp. A year. We had two ladies conventions, two men's conventions. We had 30, 60, 70 days between the last of June to the first of September with five services a day for 70 days straight. We were out a few drummers. We had three full services, three full meals, and two teachings plus two children's services a day. If you want to add those. And I took the offerings up for almost every one of those 500 and some meetings. This girl, because she's given the prophet a drink of water, is never going to lack for finances. And I was chosen to take the offering for every speaker. And I didn't even know what I was doing. But God knew what he was doing. He was preparing my future for me. Hallelujah. Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. Think about it. For 20 years. For 20 years, we went to prayer every morning at 8 o'clock, Monday through Saturday. If you were there on the campground, even the babies had to come to prayer. Nobody stayed in their room. Oh, I can't come. I'm babysitting. I can't come. 
You know what the Lord said to me when I asked my sister to help me go preach and minister to somebody they needed help? She said, well, Ruth, I haven't made the beds or washed my dishes this morning. And the Lord spoke to me, and she's been saved for years and played in a lot of tent meetings and served the Lord with all of her heart. And the Lord said, she's not in the kingdom yet. Wow. Played many tent meetings late night. Prayed me into the kingdom. She's not in the kingdom yet. Folks, what am I saying to you? What, what do you think I'm saying to you this morning? The Bible says we got to press for the high places. Press for the mark. We got to press. And people that are in love, their lover is on their heart all the time. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You ever had a daughter or son? All they talked about was that girl they were going with, or that boy they were going with. They didn't hear anything else. They'd grab a piece of bread off the table and run out the door. They just couldn't bear to be out of their presence for 10 minutes. He said, I have something against you. You've left your first love. God wants us excited about him. If you get excited about the Lord, you're not going to find the devil for 20 miles down the road. He's not going to come around where you are madly in love with Jesus. Okay? Some of you are kind of saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pray fire down on your enemies. Amen, amen. This girl comes up to me right here. Well, I need her. I'll call her by name. I went and spoke, listen, upstairs one Saturday morning. Listen to this. Man, I didn't sleep all that night. I wasn't trying to get a word from the Lord. I just wanted to get a little bit of rest. I'm awake all night long. And this girl, Juanita, shows up. I'm going to stay for an hour. Now, I got up early to get there because we only have one hour of prayer meeting there on Saturday morning. Sister Ruth, can you go out with me? I can go out. I'm so tired. And she, you were there. It was your birthday. She said, it's her birthday. And she said, I want to take her out. So we went over and had cupcakes at Dunkin' Donuts. At Dunkin' Donuts. Not cupcakes. Donuts at Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Okay, this is the way I felt about that. It's her birthday. It's the only one she's going to have. And God looks to see if you're going to do it or not do it. No matter how tired, he doesn't care if you've been up all day for three days. I'm telling you. There's a work that needs to be done, and it was her birthday. And she's from another country. <coughs> and she said, we want to have duck and donuts. Okay. Hey, here's what Juanita said to me. Man, I wanted to sit on her. <laughs> I stayed up all night long praying for you to come and go with me today. I said, you're the one. You're the one. You prayed all night long for me to get any sleep. <laughs> she said, caught me in church Sunday morning after we went out and had our donuts. I would like to tell you the rest. She took, listen. She said, I feel God, God wants me to bless you. What do you need? I said, don't ever ask me. You better ask God. I don't want anybody to come and say, I gave you this and this and this. I am not responsible. Mm -hmm. But she did. She went to the check and drew out to the bank and drew out a nice amount of money, which I needed at that time for the children overseas and different things. Listen, I got up that morning thinking I was going to be back home in two hours. We were at Dunkin' Donuts for five hours. <clears throat> Four hours, but five thirty, six o'clock. I showed up at nine that morning, and I'm at Dunkin' Donuts. I'm just telling you, this is how my day is all the time. You know how it is at home. Man, she thinks I'm in bed. No, I haven't even started to get in bed yet. One o'clock in the morning. I've got to read some Bible. But I've got to put that. We need to put that first. And what I'm saying to you, if you want to see people run for the hills, but you know the scripture says, I look to the hills and what's coming my help. That means you look for a higher place. Pray for all them people that are needling you. If you don't know, watch if you have to stay up for three nights. Listen, they'll leave town. Billy Tim. Pray in tongues. Don't pray in English. We don't really know how to pray. That's right. <laughs> Let's warn our says to the Lord, Lord, I didn't call to do all these things. He said, yes, you did. 
He said, when? He said, when you were praying in tongues. Yeah. <laughs> because the Spirit knows what we need more than anything. Amen. It has divine, perfect direction. How many believe that? Yes. yes. But I, I, I didn't tell the girl how I felt, but when she said, oh, I'm so glad you came. Hi, I stayed up. Oh, my friend. I'm like, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I stayed up, she said, until past two this morning. That's and I went in there trying to go to sleep. Uh -huh. But God is making sure that I remembered what I was up for. Yeah. And by the next day, I was going to just go out for two hours. But I was gone almost eight hours. Because Jesus says, I have need of you. Mm -hmm. And here's what happens, honey. You'll be tired for a little while because he's stretching you. The spirit, the soul, and the body is not used to it. But he's making room for the glory. He's stretching the vessel for the glory. And you never get tired. Everybody else is asleep, not you, boy. You're wide awake like an eagle, looking around. You're on your watch. Eagle can see for two miles away. Perfect vision. Hallelujah. And that's why we have these great miracles. Praise the Lord. Great favor. Little girl was at the altar. She was waiting for Rachel to pray for her. I said, well, honey, is my prayers any good? I just told her. I said, she's got a line there. I said, my prayers are just as good. Let me pray for you. I'm, I'm part of this church. I said, everybody knows who I am. I prayed for her, and I began to give her words of knowledge about David. Rachel meets me after church. She said, oh, you know that girl? I was telling her about the, the word I had, but I didn't tell her. She didn't know it was at first. She said, oh, I gave her a word about the favor of the Lord. I said, that's what I was telling her. She got two witnesses there about great favor that was going to come on her life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said, you speak in tongues? No. Okay, we're going to speak right now. Don't let them get away. Whoa. Give them something to take home. Amen. One little girl asked me one day, and I prayed for her. She came off the street, saw our ministry, ended up at the altar. I went over, she got saved, and went to the Holy Ghost too. Well, she didn't know what it was, but she wanted it. So after she got it, she says, man, it broke me. She says, can I keep it? Oh. Wow. Oh. Wow. She, said. she said, can I keep it? Yes. Then I had to give her a teaching to keep it. Yes. These are the icons. You know what an icon is? Yes. You might know what an icon is. Somebody this. They have these icons in Russia, the Virgin Mary. They have a certain painting, certain look to them. They won't let you take them out, but we managed to get some out. Don't, let me, don't ask us how we did it. I can't tell you. But it's something you'd like to have because few Amen. people have them. They're very, very expensive. I'm talking about when God gives you these dimensions of his power, his presence, his direction. You want to wrap yourself up in it. Yeah, the gift God's given to the world. <coughs> so, if anybody can get Rodney Howard Brown, Google it. Get him today. There's a lot of people that are that are on Jim Baker's program, but what he has to say is very rich. And he used Phoenix as an example. Of the beginning of a revival move in this country. Wow. He came here first. He came here and rented our church. That's what I'm talking about. And I didn't see hardly any of our staff in his meetings. When was that? This is when he was over on Cactus. Oh. 2008. But I was listening to him and cheering him on. And he just stopped everything and called me out and gave me a word. But what God was going to do, and whatever it was, he's still doing it. I don't remember the details. It's good to see all of you this morning. Good to see you. I've been praying that you would show up. She did. Even I talked to the Lord this morning about you. <laughs> well, he has you to ask us questions at the right time. It's not that you're special. He knows what he's put on your mind for a reason. Not because you just want to think about it. You're 
fit into that network of what God is doing at that moment. You're a part of the dots that he connects for what he's doing. When we get to heaven, I'm going to have a rollback at least a dozen times of the upper room. Okay. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your presence, the wonder of your love over us this morning. The entrance of your word gives light. Lord, let it come alive. Let it light up every dark place. Let us be mm. faithful in what we hear. And let us be excellent with what we do. God, with all of our might. Lord, you didn't ask it to pass anybody's exam. You just wanted a people that loved you, that loved your name. People are willing to be faithful unto you. Not afraid to let go, but to get more, more of you. Lord, we need more of you. Yeah. More of you. Yeah. Hallelujah. That we're bold and we're not afraid. Not afraid, you said, don't look at their faces. Don't be afraid. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now, Lord, give us the faith to believe for the plan for this nation. You said you've got a few. <laughs> but John said it was a number no man can number. Lord, every man is on your mind. Their names are written in the palm of your hand. Lord, you hear everybody and you keep them all separated. What a God. Oh, what a God. Lord, let your foolishness fall upon this nation. Let the foolishness of God confound and confine men that have been doing research for so long and still haven't found it. So the day that we search for you with all of our heart, Lord, take all of our heart. Let there be no hidden places, no secret place but in you. Thank you, Lord. Let there be a divine interaction in this meeting today. Let us see through the veil, behind the veil, 